Hey guys, what's up? Here is my interview with Ekta Jaju. She is the CEO and founder of Organic Foods, and her journey, her story is spotlighted in a new documentary series called Five. It's commissioned by MasterCard, and they're basically five shorts that spotlight five CEOs, founders, businesswomen from all over the world, and Ekta Jaju's story and her founding of Organic Foods and that company's mission statement, etc., is featured as one of the five shorts in five. Okay, so I'll have information on how to find those shorts and check those shorts out. And if you want to, yeah, this is a pretty cool interview. It's very quick, very quick interview because the there was a little bit of an internet lag, so you're going to have about a good seven to eight minute interview here with Ekta. And she talks about the facets of being a good leader and having a strong vision and a strong I guess sort of um, a purpose in how one moves about in the world as far as creating one's own business, what really applies to her, where in this case, I guess the, the big takeaway for me was making a profit and is great, but for her, it's all about sustainability and scalability so she can make a very big impact with her company, with Organic Foods. So more information on her and her company, Organic Foods, is below in the description. But without further ado, here's my interview with Ekta. My grandfather's been a very big inspiration in my life. And I knew that I always wanted to do something with impact. See, even when I was doing films, it was always about impacting. Impact was always more important. And, uh, you know, uh, what way you do it uh, could differ. So uh, now I uh, am directly engaged in working with communities. So, uh, yes, there was something that was uh, always uh, ingrained. And... Uh, Profit in the sense that I think it's important for businesses to be sustainable because unless you are sustainable, you will not grow, you will not scale and your impact will always remain small. And so sustainability is important, but uh, that bottom line or making huge profits, which just benefits a few, I think that doesn't excite me enough to be doing what I'm doing. If, if we could, you know, create that uh, prosperity for many, I think that would be exciting. So prosperity is important, but for all. I know it's hard, it would be very hard to really sum it up, but just your relationship with the farmers, what what type of change, and again, this is something that you could talk, talk about for hours, but what type of big change, big picture change have you seen regarding the farmers who work with you and who collaborate with you? And I'm sure that's a really important part of what you do. And I'm sure that adds fuel to your daily you know, passions, just to see how, how much they've changed. So... Uh... I think the change is something that because I stay in Calcutta and I only go to visit them, you know, once in a while. So I have not been, I have not seen that change where, you know, they were using chemicals and now they're using pesticides. But what I, uh, what is very endearing to me is the pride in the farming community. Like, you know, farmers seem like a happy bunch. They feel good about what they're doing. Uh, other farmers will come to them and ask them, you know, how do you do this? What do you do? And they will talk about, you know, uh, organic farming, the methods that they use, how it's helped them. Uh, some farmers claim it's, you know, it's, it's they've seen magical impacts on their field and their soil and their crops because of organic farming. When we go back, we sometimes hear stories that, you know, there was a flood-like situation and, you know, when the water receded, the conventional farmers didn't have any crops. While, you know, these organic crops, because they're hardy, farmers still got some crops. So, you know, just these small, small stories or when you go to their homes, it's, they're themselves eating the black rice or they're themselves eating the organic food that they are growing. They feel good, you know, they feel that the systems are doing well now. Their digestion is improved. Um, you know, their cows, you know, their cows are doing better now because, you know, they're getting organic hay. So, you know, th these are just small stories, you know, that you happen to your when you are there. Or, you know, when you move around in a village, you suddenly see now there are so many cow sheds and, you know, there are so many, you know, cattle around and, you know, just small, small things like that. But, you know, change is small, it's incremental. But when you see that, you know, something has changed and it's not changed because you told them to do it, but because they believe, you know, in this and they have developed that belief in this system because of what they've seen. I think that means more to me. A lot of people aren't entrepreneurs. They're, they're not owning their own company. Maybe they'll have their respective jobs. They'll work hard at it and they'll go home to their families and that's that's life. But I'm, I'm assuming for you, 
you you being the CEO and owner and head of everything, does your job at the end of the day ever end? How are you able to schedule your time with such a monumental career and job? Because I can't even imagine how one even can shoulder that. Um, to be honest with you, Greg, my my time means a lot to me. Like my me time means a lot to me. I'm very spiritual. I'd like to spend some time with that. Um, I know health is very important because I won't be able to do what I'm doing for long if I am not able to stay healthy. So all of that means a lot. I spend a lot of my times in the morning. I'm a very early riser, like I told you. So I spend a lot of my mornings um, with myself doing things that I would like to do. And I'm also very mindful that uh, uh, business is like a baby. So when it needs you, it needs you. So I also have a lot of time available to be able to uh, do things which are necessary to do. But I'm also very mindful that I need to take time out for myself also. So it's a juggle, but I think uh, I do it well. And my final question to you is just, have you received any feedback? Just what kind of feedback have you received from Five? And how good does it feel just to be part of this this thing? It's it's really cool. I've, I've, like, I've, I've seen a few videos that where Lisa is talking about what she thinks of me or things like that. Which is it's it's interesting to see yourself from an external perspective. Also, I think my I think my husband has never said such nice things to me that he said on the video. So yeah, I mean it's nice to sort of see yourself from an external lens, and it's very exciting to be, to be a part of this because I you know it's it's a time where India is going through a lot of transition in the farming space, and I do hope that a lot of people will take inspiration from what we are doing. And, uh, you know, um, create spaces where there can be, you know, uh, prosperity for the community, for farmers and, you know, things like that. So, and, and, and I see a lot of scope for uh, such spaces to be created in the country now. So, yeah, I really hope that this will become a movement. Sustainable farming will become a movement and it will benefit the smallholder farmers. And a very quick last question is just from your perspective, what are the keys to be becoming just an effective leader and communicator because it seems that you have to deal with and collaborate with so many people on a daily basis and they have to really just really buy into your vision and execute it. What have you learned over the years regarding being a leader and what are the most important elements from your perspective? I was never a leader as such, but I think having a strong uh, vision that um, is beyond yourself and, uh, you know, being able to put in that, uh, uh, that extra mile for your own vision. And you make, you make, I don't, I won't say you make sacrifices, but there's something that's very important to you. And so to be able to hold on to it, uh, you take certain actions or you make certain sacrifices because the other thing is more important to you than the other. And I think when that vision is to benefit many, I think people will be able to sort of connect to that. And I think that's what drives uh, everything else. So I think it also drives you personally. Uh, it also changes you personally. And it also drives things around you to make things happen. And you could call that leadership. But uh, uh, yeah, but I think it's that that larger vision that drives every, everything, including yourself. Hector, thank you so much for rescheduling this interview. And I, I really pre- appreciate all the time. You know, I think uh, I have to thank you for this. And I'm extremely embarrassed. I, I feel terrible no. not showing up. No, you know, thank you so much. You know what we're going to do? We're just going to blame our friend, Rachel. Rachel, it's all your fault. How about that? How do you feel about that, Rachel? <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> have, have a great I'll have take a great it. I'll take it. <laughs>